Okay, here's some of the things I used. I use true oil. Um, true oil is uh, seems to be what most people use. It's like a tongue oil. Uh, you could actually get away with a tongue oil or some linseed oil. Uh, I got some mineral spirits. Uh, what we did it during the initial coat is we mixed that two to one. Two of these to one of the true oils. Uh, mix it all together and we use that to get the first coat on. I'll show you what it looks like. I also have some 220, uh, just regular car sandpaper. It's uh, it's a uh, wet dry. Uh, I like the wet dry because in a, in a minute you'll see what we do is we we actually wet sand the wood using the two in one liquid. So if you're using regular sandpaper, the the, the sand is going to fall off. So use a wet dry. Pick the stuff up at the uh, Harbor Freight for really cheap. That's also a self stick. I tell you, I did the self stick. I I'm, I actually feeling pretty good about myself here. I, I went over to the grandkids' house and they had some of these little noodles. They call them for uh, playing in the pool. I took one of these noodles and I, I stole the end of it and I uh, I cut it in half. You'll see that that little groove right there is actually later, uh, I use it to sand the, the, uh, the, the uh, hand grips. You'll see that the groove is actually about the same as the hand grip. It is also very flexible so if the hand grip is a little bit bigger in one spot, it actually flexed. And what I did was, I took the, uh, the wet dry sandpaper and I stuck it. Uh, you know, sticky side to the to the uh, noodle, and it actually formed right around the the piece. I I'm really pretty proud of myself with that. <laughs> the other flat pieces I used this uh, piece of uh, real hard uh, uh, foam. We used that when we were sanding cars. You, what you want to do is you want to make sure you don't use your fingers. See how see how your dirty your fingers get. Uh, also, uh, you, you you see I use gloves in this because I don't want to clean my hands afterwards, but I don't want that uh, nasty acetone getting into my blood either. Uh, but you'll find when you sand, you push with your fingers. If you could just use the palm of your hand, it's still not a flat surface. So you're going over the flat surfaces of the stock, like on the side piece where the chin goes, your chin goes, you, you can leave finger marks, finger grooves. Uh, we had that problem when we were painting cars. When you put the, you finally get the paint on it, you go, oh my gosh, there's there's grooves in it. So use use this thing, use something flat, so, kind of soft, and then uh, I use this noodle. It, it worked really good. I just invented that. Uh, also, um, I keep my my product when I between the the, uh, the uh, two to one mix when I'm not using it. I keep it in a jar. These have a tendency to crystallize, and then you get little spots on the paint. Uh, I use 400 uh, grit steel wool. I use that for prepping the paint. Uh, it worked really good. Uh, I also use this little little uh, this little stainless steel pot. Now the other thing I use is acetone. You can strip your you can strip these things using stripper, however you want to do it. it usually it doesn't acquire so much, not, you don't have to be that aggressive with it. Just use uh, some acetone or some Formby's. Go to, go to uh, uh, in True Value or one of the hardware stores and get some Formby's paint finisher. What it is, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like a fingernail polish remover. I use just straight acetone. I put the acetone in here and I, and I rub it off with the uh, other finish. The original finish, I rubbed it off with uh, steel wool. It worked good, but then blow it off, wipe it off real quick, and then uh, you're ready to sand. The other thing you want to be very careful of, oh, wait a second, before we get that far, I use uh, I use wet dry, I use 320 and 400, and I also use 220 to start. So this is 220, kind of takes all the scratches out. You want to make sure you're going with the grain, if, you, if you're going with the grain, because if you go into a circle, what's going to happen is you're going to leave some swirl marks and it take forever to get them out. So just go into a uh, straight mark, straight sanding with the grain until you get to the 400 wet sand, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, keep your surfaces clean. You're going to be messing with this for a long time here, maybe about seven days. Keep your surfaces clean. I use a good old uh, towel that's been used for a million things. I use it to clean my guns. Uh, I, I keep it washed when I wash it. It doesn't have a lot of lint in it. Uh, and you want to make sure the lint keeps uh, what uh, keeps off your your surfaces. Also, get in a well lit and also into a nice area. I'm sitting on the garage, so if you hear cars in the background, that's what's going on here. If it's real cold where you're living, then you might want to uh, take it indoors, but make sure you wear a mask or something. Okay, so that was it. Now, as far as the the, uh, the material itself, I told you I did a 220 with the flat surface, and then I went with the, the, the noodle with the, the uh, 220, and then 320, and then 400. I took care, it, there's a piece of metal on here. What I did is I covered it with uh, some duct tape. Duct tape seemed to work. The, the sandpaper went right over it. The other thing you want to be careful of, on these edges here, 
see those edges they form right to the metal pieces on the stock so if you're real aggressive with the uh, with the uh, sandpaper you're gonna you're gonna put a divot right there and then when you put the metal piece back on it's not gonna go up flush so be real careful with that you don't have to be aggressive with this love it baby because this is gonna be something you're gonna have for the rest of your life at least that's what I plan on doing so now I've sanded everything I've got the stock sanded I've got the pieces the other two pieces sanded I've uh, coated them with a with the uh, two to one mixture uh, I've wiped off the excess with with my uh, steel wool uh, and I don't have a whole lot of excess on there and uh, I'm gonna let this dry for 24 hours in fact what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this every day at the same time I got a little job so when I come home I get changed case the wife come out here and we'll put on the second coat I'll show you that tomorrow how that turned out um, otherwise everything's here it was nice and easy now I'm gonna clean up the mess and we're gonna call it a night this is Mo have a good night